Hey everybody, it is Carrie Oberbrunner and I have with me my new friend all the way from the UK, Mr. Chris Ducker. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, Carrie. Good to be with you. Well, listen, man, if anybody is in the entrepreneurial conversation, they probably heard the hype a few months ago about your brand new book, Youpreneur. And what is that subtitle, Chris? And why did you choose the subtitle you chose? Because subtitles I yeah. love. Yeah, I know. I hear you. So the subtitle is The Definitive Guide to Becoming the Go-To Leader in Your Industry and Building a Future Proof Business. So it could be it could be seen as the first paragraph of the book. <laughs> it's right. also the subtitle of the book as well. And the full title of the book is Rise of the Youpreneur. It's, it's, a, it's a call to action. It's a movement that we're trying to kick off here. I love it. And let's talk. Let's just jump right in. For the people okay. that don't know this concept, I've read that you kind of coined it. Was it, what was it back in 2015, 2014, something like that? How did you coin yep. it? Why did you coin it? And what does it mean? So this is a good story. Um, we're talking Independence Day, July 4, 2014. I'm in the United States mm. and I'm at my good friend uh, Pat Flynn's house. Sure. The kids are out. So we just had a, a, a water balloon fight. Um, just me and Pat, not the kids, just, just the two of us. <laughs> Um, no, we just we just had a water balloon fight, um, and you know the barbecue thing and all the rest of it, and we um, we made a cup of coffee and we went to his home office. The kids were drying off and the you know all that sort of fun stuff, and we just got up talking. You know, now believe it or not, you know a lot of people know Pat's name within you know the entrepreneurial sure. world, particularly online, obviously, um, and everybody thinks that you know when he and I get together as close as we are, he's the godfather of my my, my daughter Cassandra. Wow. You know, we, we we call each other other families our second family but understand this when we're together we actually don't talk about business mm. all that much we, okay we geek out over star wars or we talk <laughs> about you know how how wacky the philippines is uh, his mother was actually from cebu you know where we live for so long and all these other things business does come up but not as much as you probably would, would might assume mm. that it does. Sure. And, but this particular day, he asked me a question that sparked this conversation, and he said to me, "Where do you self? Where do you see yourself being fifteen years from now? Now, why this number of fifteen? Mm. I still haven't been able to fathom. Sometimes people will ask you, where do you see yourself this time next year? Or where yeah. do you see yourself five years from now? Yeah. 15, 15 years. I've been an entrepreneur for 15 years. Mm. I have no hair. You have no hair. <laughs> we have seen. Clearly, we've yeah. both been in this game for a while. Right. right? Or we have the same barber, one or the other. Um, but... You know, with all, with all joking on one side, 15 years is a long time. Sure. But when I actually sat down with him and we started talking about the kind of people that we want to work with and work for, mm. the types of work we want to do, the influence we want to have, the change that we want to affect on individuals, it became very apparent to me that I was actually already working with and for mm. these these perfect customers of mine, but I wasn't aware of it at the time. Sure. It was that conversation that really helped me understand it. And it was people like authors, speakers, podcasters, you know, um, um, consultants, coaches, yeah. content creators, people that were ultimately building a business based around them, their expertise, and mm. the people that they wanted to serve and sell to. And that's what a youpreneur is. It's okay. a personal brand entrepreneur, not just a personal brand, but a personal brand entrepreneur, somebody that genuinely makes money out of working with the right people for the right reasons and doing the right things. And so that's when the term youpreneur was coined. And I tried, like any good entrepreneur doing Go Daddy, you bought it? Century, yeah. Try and get the domain name. It's gone. Somebody's been sitting on it for 10 years. I'm thinking, you got to be kidding me here. So I snap up the Twitter ID. I snap up the Facebook ID. I snap up the YouTube ID. And I'm thinking, I've got to get this domain name. I just yeah. this, At this point, there's no other name. There's no other word that's going to do the job for me. I, you know, I'm that serious yeah. about it. And so uh, I tracked the guy down. His who is information was was uh, private. Okay. Couldn't find him on, on the on the on the listing. So I tracked him down via LinkedIn of all places. Awesome. And 
and I asked him how much he wanted to sell it, <laughs> sell it to, and he came back to me and said twenty five thousand dollars. I no. said, you have no email list, you've got no traffic, you've got no content. You you are obviously on some sort of pharma pharmaceutical you know <laughs> medication right now. Thinking right. that's happening. So we ended up uh, at a much 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 lower rate than that. But I was able to get it. Wow. Yeah. I love it. So did you, here's just a weird question. When you contacted him, did you use your real name and therefore he Googled you and said, oh, this guy's loaded. I got to, got to spike oh, yeah. it. Because yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> I wish I was loaded. <laughs> I, 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 I felt like, and I still feel like there's no room in business for smoke and mirrors. Oh, that's good. Right. Um, you've got to be who you are and be you all the time. You know, when I first started creating content online, 2010, I was blogging and podcasting. Okay. Right. And I was hiding a little bit. I, mm. It wasn't for malicious reasons, but I was hiding a little bit because I, I had a very large company at the time, which at the time I thought was big. It was like 130 employees. Okay. Now it's like 450. Wow. But at the time I thought that was a lot of people and I had B2B corporate clients in in the US, in the UK, and I'm thinking, well, you know, what if I say something? What if I write something on the blog and it upsets them? Mm. What am I going to do? And uh, so I was kind of holding back a little bit. And then I had a, an injury in 2012 or a reoccurring injury, and I had to have back surgery okay. to fix it. And I was kind of laid up for a while, for four or five weeks recovering. And it really got me thinking about you know what I was doing and how I'd been building the business over the all the businesses two of them at that point what I was doing to build them and I realized that 99.999 percent of the time people were doing business with me interesting way before they were doing business with my companies or or what we were offering them so you are the business yeah, that's right. Yeah. It was the personal brand. I didn't realize that I had one at right. the time, but I did. And I was making money out of it. Mm. And the moment I realized that it was a genuine business model, that's when I put my foot down on the gas. And uh, man, the rest, is, uh, <laughs> the rest is a kind of a crazy journey over the last six years. Right? I love it. That little nugget right there, Chris, is unplanned. We didn't plan that. But I think it's no. so key that you even said, hey, when I contact someone for a domain name, I'm not going to pretend that I'm somebody else. That is my walk away for the day. I've learned something already. Now let's go a little bit deeper. You mentioned the Philippines. I think you did, or I know your history yep. a little bit. And you have this crazy model. You have 400 plus employees in the Philippines. You relocated back to the UK. Give us that journey of like, why? I mean, what happened? Give us the quick story. Well, in, in all transparency, I am in the Philippines right now. So you, you were a little off base at the beginning of, of, of the chat there. You live in the Philippines. I was already in the UK. So I'm still in the Philippines right now, but we are moving back to the UK gotcha. in a few months from now. So if I was to show you this part of my office, you'd see nothing but boxes. <laughs> I hear it's you. all getting boxed up. This looks very nice behind here. <laughs> right, this, right. For, for those watching the video, this is all very nice, but over there is a total mess. Um, so, yeah. So you're still, still there, gotcha. But I'm, but I'm not worried at all about leaving that. That you know, the, we have two businesses here, um, and I'm not worried about leaving them because the first time I was in the office since September last year was last night, literally wow. last night. I went in. We were celebrating ten years. Uh, of, of being in business and I wanted to go in and I treated everybody to ice cream and cotton candy and all that sugary goodness um, <laughs> and uh, and I went in and, and kind of addressed the troops you know before they got on got on got on got to work and everything um, but that was honestly the first time I was there until Sept you know, from September wow. actually the city of so I'm not and I'm only 15 minutes drive away wow so I'm not I'm not worried about being based yeah. in the UK I mean, sure. I'm, I'm genuinely not worried about it in any way whatsoever. I've got great management in place. Okay. I I learned a long time ago to get out of my own damn way. Yeah. And I think that that that's probably out of my 15 years as an entrepreneur, it's probably been the number one 
lesson that I've learned mm. that I've got to get out of my own way. I think entrepreneurs as a whole have to get out of their own ways. You know, we, we're, we're wired differently. Our DNA is very strange compared to the normal people in sure. the world. Um, and I, I really believe regardless of how you identify with being an entrepreneur, whether you're, you know, uh, a consultant or you run a big company sure. or you're an author or you're a solopreneur of some variety, you know you're wired differently. Yep. You know you are deep down, but you also know that you're probably a massive micromanager or you have been at some point <laughs> in the past. Guilty, right? right? So yeah, it's so, like, you know, yeah. I, my name's Chris <laughs> right. and I'm a micromanager. It's been, you know, six years since I micromanaged somebody. You know right. what I mean? It's right. like AA, it really is. And so I, I, I think that was really the biggest thing for me is the moment I got out of my own way, started hiring the right people for mm. the right roles and really focusing in on hiring that management team that now the majority of them have been with me seven odd years on average probably, it was everything. It wow. enabled me to, to, to do everything that I do now with Youpreneur and I travel and speak and host my own events and do all the fun stuff that I can do, yet there's still this machine this this money making machine client serving machine in the background that for all intents and purposes kind of runs without me i love it so if you're managing and essentially maintaining then you are not creating and collaborating and you as an entrepreneur some of you's dying if you will in other words, what, right. when you're creating and collaborating, let's talk about the Youpreneur Summit as an example. But when you started to create that and collaborate, that what gave you new life? Yeah, I mean, you know, I've been holding events for a long time. I've been running and organizing them now since 2011. Okay. Um, the Youpreneur Summit, and by pure coincidence, I'm wearing this T-shirt from last year's event. Um, but the Youpreneur Summit was, I don't know, man, it was a... It was it was a very it was a very very weird thing for me mm. because I'd been away from England for so long seventeen years wow um, and it was always a dream to hold a big event in my hometown of London mm. um, and when we very seriously started talking about it which was probably back in what two thousand. I'm going to say probably 2015, we really started to talk about okay. it. And we signed the contract the week before Christmas that year. Mm. Um, and <laughs> I remember signing it thinking, what am I doing? This yeah. is crazy. But we, you know, we, we did it. And I said to myself, you know, I'm going to go big mm. or I'm going to go home. Wow. And so we went real big. We rented the Queen Elizabeth II Convention Center right opposite Westminster Abbey where all the royal weddings take place and, and where Her Majesty herself was coronated all those years ago. I mean, we're literally, <laughs> like, it's across the street. That's wow. the thing, right? Wow. And so Big Ben, just around the corner, Big Ben, five-minute walk away around the corner. So we went real big on it. And then the fear kicks in. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Gosh, golly, I need to sell at least 250 tickets to break even. What am I going to do? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. But you know what? You, 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 get, you get great people involved. Mm. I had an incredible speaker line up last year, just as incredible this year, um, if not maybe more incredible, wow. quite frankly. Um, calling in some favors, you know, yes. working with the right friends. You talk about, you know, collaborating and things sure. like that. I'm I'm very very blessed, Carrie. Very yeah. blessed to to have good 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 friends that will uh, go to bat for me and help me out and have a great time at the same time. So everybody wins. Oh yeah. So those of us who know the podcast, the Igniting Souls podcast, just just you listeners, I want you to realize that Chris had Amy Schmidauer last year as one of the breakout speakers or speakers. And she spoke at our conference for the last two years in a row. So there's some collaboration there. Uh, Dan Miller speaking at our current event. How are you able to do this, Chris, where you kind of – outsiders look at this and say, oh, my gosh, you know, Chris knows all these people. He's got a 400-person team in the Philippines. And all I want to do is, like, escape my 9 to 5, you know – Chris is the pro team. 
how do you know what would you tell the person who's like at the very first step I mean number one I'll tell them read his book because a book is the most that's pop- a good tip Carrie. oh I mean <laughs> I, the, the book you know for those people who've never written a book it is your best thinking Chris I mean it is if someone could say Chris can I come to Philippines or London and pick your brain You've just given it to them yeah, for, pretty for, much. for 15 yeah. bucks I mean, or whatever. My, yeah. my whole deal was that I, I wanted to write a book that was complete for anybody that wanted to build that, you know, that model of what I call the business of you. Awesome. Right? So it's, you know, it's three sections, building, marketing, and monetizing your brand, right? Love it. So... I didn't want to hold it back. You know, everything's in there. Will we update it, expand it at some point? Maybe, yeah, probably, definitely. Sure. Uh, particularly in English, uh, for sure. Um, but it was more than just writing a book and putting it out there and helping people. It, it, it genuinely is a call to action. You know, it's rise, rise. of the entrepreneur. It's time to rise up, I my fellow entrepreneurs, because the world needs what only you can serve up on that silver platter. Mm. You know, I don't care what industry you're in, who you're serving, what market you're operating inside of, it doesn't matter. It's all totally, totally, totally irrelevant because when you build the business of you, it's 100% original. It can't be copied. It can't be beaten. And is that, is, uh, yeah, so that, that is your term, future-proof. That's what you mean. Yep, absolutely. It's an asset. It's the last mm-hmm. pivot. It's the last pivot you'll ever have to make in your professional career. I'm 100% sure of it. I mean, if you can't hear the enthusiasm in my voice when I say that, then you need your ears testing. I'm 100% sure that this is the last pivot you will ever have to make in your career. You are future-proofing your very existence as an entrepreneur uh, by by building that business of you model. Mm. I know I know some people are making three, four, five million dollars on this every year. They're mm. in my community. I talk to them regularly. Yeah. But I also know some people that are only making thirty, forty, or fifty thousand a year and they desperately want to serve more they want to get involved with the right people they want to do the right things for the right reasons and they're the people that i really really enjoy working with awesome build market monetize can you can you tell us kind of the because i love table of contents in a book i'm a nerd like that because what you're basically saying is hey hey guys i'm chris and i'm going to serve you by taking you on a journey and here's the three signposts that indicate mm-hmm. where we're traveling. So you say build, market, monetize. Why is it in that order? Why is there not another step? Why'd you choose those three? Yeah, so this, this I wish it was really this cool yeah. that I just came up with it, but you know it's not, right? right you just right. know it's not that cool. So basically what happened was September 1, 2015, we opened the doors to the Youpreneur community. It's a membership community. You pay on a monthly basis to be part of it. We have proprietary training and a whole bunch of other stuff in there, right? And it took off like crazy. We had a few hundred people join in the first six months. I was super pumped and happy about it. And then I started to see these holes. Mm. These some of them were great big gaping gaps okay. in 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 the content that we were providing that we thought was complete, but it clearly wasn't in regards to a number of different aspects of building, you know, that 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 business of you. And so we did middle of 2016, we did a content audit on our acceleration library, on mm. our training library. And we realized where the holes were. And I forget, I mean, right on the other side of this camera, um, there's a big whiteboard. It's probably about eight foot across and maybe five foot down. And I had a couple of members of my team here in my home office and we were scribbling all afternoon on what we were going to do to clean this up. And as it as the day kind of progressed and my one of my assistants were kind of moving notes around and we had post-it notes and she was rubbing stuff out and rewriting things out i stood back from it and i looked at the board Mm -hmm. and it was so clear to me that there were now three steps in this and that was when what is now known as the upano roadmap was wow and i looked at it and i didn't think upano roadmap at the time but i did think holy cow, that's my next book. 
There you go. And so that's how that's how it was born. That's how we created it. I love it. So yeah. just some takeaways. Number one, you didn't think in isolation. You brought your team around you. That's huge. Oh, yeah. Number yeah. two, I got a huge whiteboard right next to me, but there's just something about whiteboarding as opposed to, you know, typing it on your computer. Uh, what do you think that is? I don't even know, Chris. I'm not asking you to be a psychologist, think, but what do you think? Yeah, I, I don't think there's like a magic answer to that question. But for me personally, um, I just like I, I, I like the idea of getting away from the computer screen mm. whenever I have the opportunity to do it. I'm not married to it. You yeah. know, I'm, I'm a happily married man. I don't need my computer screen. So I, I, I kind of I like the idea of just mapping it out in front of me and being able to very quickly mm. erase something yeah. and replace it with another idea and or move it in another direction. You can't do that on a computer. All these, you know, this mind meister and all these other yeah. kind of mind mapping tools, they're too fiddly to mess around with keyboards and mouse. Sure. Just get a pen. Just get <laughs> a pen. Right. You That's know, right. people have been planning businesses and, and revolutions right. for years with pens. Just right. Pen, you know? That's true. So I hear you saying sometimes we overcomplicate things. Totally. As entrepreneurs. Always. Sometimes yeah, not, we not think sometimes. It's... <laughs> always. So we, we always overcomplicate things. I don't know why it is that way. Right. But, you know, I'm a big believer now that less is very much more yeah. in almost every circumstance. Hmm. You think maybe some entrepreneurs, all entrepreneurs, maybe trust the tools they, more than the, their gut? Maybe that's it? Maybe they, oh, I need the tool, the gadget, rather than just well, my the, gut. Maybe it's that, or maybe they see someone that they admire, someone that they you know, the, 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 that they look up to using that tool. Yeah. And they say, well, hey, if, if Carrie's using that tool, yeah. then you know, he's successful, then I, I should be using that tool as well. Sure. And then they struggle with the tool, and the tool doesn't do anything for them. We realize, you know, or, or really what they really needed was just a notebook and a pen yeah. or a pencil and or some exactly. post-it notes. I mean, exactly. you know. That's good. It's different for everyone, I guess, but for me personally, I, I just, I love being in front of that whiteboard. It's my happy place. I love it. So the listeners, I mean, there's a lot of lessons going on right now with what Chris is sharing. Number one, he has low entry products. Like you just num named a couple of them. I see one behind you, but you have a book. So that's a low end product that people can purchase. Love it. Yep. Love it. And by the way, you had to put your picture on it. I mean, how can you talk about the rise of the youpreneur and put on this little clip art or something? So you, you, you were authentic. You owned it. Well, you know what, though? The funny thing is, is that we were 50-50 on whether I was going to go on the cover right up until, I'd say, like the last sweep of the internal design. So we actually had a graphic cover, which is horrific. I will never share. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, we had, we had the photo shoot done locally in the Philippines. Okay. I, I was in front of the camera for 30 minutes, literally. One photographer, one guy with a roaming sure. light. Um, and uh, he did a great job, and it, it turned, you know, it, it came out great. The yeah. photo looked great, and um, you know, which is hard when it's just me in the in the photo. Usually, yeah. it, I know, right? Yeah. So I was happy with it, and then when they sent through the cover, even though I I thought the design of the cover was fine, I was still fit. I was like, you know, is it a little egocentric, a little narcissistic? Sure. I'm not sure, but then. I spoke with a lot of people that you and I have as mutual friends yeah. and every single person I spoke to said, if you don't put yourself on the cover of this book, you are not living the life you are preaching. Ooh, like it's you. Ouch. Like, yeah. you like you've got to do it for that very reason. Exactly. To put yourself front and center of the business. And if you don't do it, then, you know, you're, you're kind of a loser if you don't yeah. do it. So I'm like, well, I'm not going to be a loser. Right. I worked too hard in my life to be a loser. So that's why we, we ended up going with me on the cover. But it was weird. I remember when we got the first box. And you know what it's like when you get sure. your first box of boxes from the, from the printers. And I pulled out the first copy. I laughed outrageously yeah. for about five minutes. I was like, that's mad. <laughs> I'm on the cover of a book. That's, and people are going to buy it. This that's awesome. Mad. That's you awesome. Know? But they have. They've, they've bought it. There you go. <laughs> well, and let's talk a little bit about 
publishing and because this is important a lot of our listeners are authors either they've done a book or they're about to do a book but there's a couple things you you mentioned number one your Amazon reviews are amazing I went there today I tried to find a one or a two or even I think a three maybe there's a three I don't think there is though I could only find fours and fives so good for you. We're still early days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But listen, good for you. I kind of sat back. I watched people's launches because, you know, I, I love what you do, by the way. You're an entrepreneur, but you have a business. I'm the same way. Like, in, in, a, in a way, you have to have a business too. So, so I'm a publisher. I watched your launch. You had engagement. I think you used live stream. A few you, times. I yeah. didn't go over the over the top with it, but a few yeah, times, yeah. A few times. You had a street team? Mm-hmm. Launch team? So you had a street team, you had a launch team. You were on Dan's podcast as well as many others. Your wonderful team provided me with a digital press kit. I'm saying all these things because our listeners are savvy and they're taking notes right now saying, oh, Chris did that, Chris did that, Chris did that. Um, what's something you wish you would have done maybe that you didn't do is there anything that you can think of in your launch that you're like, huh? I think that the, the only thing that I, I, I wish I had have done more of, um, and quite frankly, I just couldn't because of a time constraint more than anything else, but I wish I did more speaking gigs around the launch. Interesting. Not necessarily to sell more books because based on my first book, Virtual Freedom, Mm. Uh, which was 2014, still yet to get a one-star review. I will add that as well. <laughs> Thank you. I'd pro- I'm probably testing fate now when I yes, say that. Yes, exactly. Um, but we're at like 800 and something five-star reviews on that book. Wow. It's incredibly That's huge. successful. Yeah. It's, it, I mean, I still pinch myself, quite frankly. It's just how well it really did. Um, but when that book came out, I hit it pretty hard. I hit the yeah. speaking circuit pretty hard. Okay. Um, and I was, I was tired at the end of it. Mm-hmm. But I also felt like I kind of got it out to the people. Yes. You know what I mean? Like there was something about pressing palms and hugging. And yes. I'm a big believer that you build businesses and relationships by, you know, hugs, handshakes and high fives. That's what I always say. And so I, I, did, I did do a handful of gigs uh, around the book launch. Um, but I, I wish I did. I wish I did maybe another four or five not another four or five speaking gigs around yeah. around the launch itself. But you know, the, the other thing is this, Carrie, and you'll you'll appreciate this. Being so central to my own Upreneur ecosystem, which we talk about in the book, in terms of the different ways that you will monetize that brand that you've built up, being so central to that ecosystem, this book was never about the launch. It mm. was never about the sprint. It was always about the marathon. Wow. And so, you know, I, I wanna sell I wanna sell half a million copies of this thing in the next ten years. Yeah. You know, like I'm not I'm not interested in selling twenty thousand copies in a month, hitting the New York Times, you know, sure. seller list and disappearing. That doesn't interest me at all. No. I agree. I agree. A book to me is an asset. It's a business. And uh, mm-hmm. that's something we teach religiously is that um, how to turn a book into 18 streams of income. So all of our listeners kind of know that concept where, you, you know, you have a mastermind and, uh, right? I mean, you, you yep. yeah. So, you know, I often tell people, look, your book's probably about 12 chapters. Do a mastermind around your book for a year. Each month is a chapter in your book. And yeah, you can monetize that well. Let's talk about why you went self-publishing versus traditional publishing. Was it control? Was it the profits, all the above, other things? What do you think? I think it was... Uh, I think control probably would top the list. Sure. I think profits would be number two. You know, I was your typical greenhorn first-time author with virtual freedom um, I got a half decent um, advance advance mm-hmm. on it for a first time author. Sure. Based on the size of my platform, yeah. quite frankly, they knew they were going to sell a whole bunch of books, and they did. Um, but 
you know, I, I signed over the audiobook rights. I sound so I signed over the international rights. You know, it, it was a nightmare. Yeah. And it took me like two years to get the international rights back. And at that point, nobody was interested in the book anymore because it was too old. And yeah. All this sort of stuff. Um, and, you know, the audio, I'll never forget it. I was on tour speaking about the book. And my publisher's emailing me and they're like, we need to do an audio book. People are asking for it. And I'm like, well, that's great. You know, as soon as I get back to the Philippines, I'll book out a few days in a recording studio that I know. They're great. They'll hook me up with, a, you know, with, with everything I need and we'll rock it out. And so I'm like, we can't wait till then. You know, we need to do it now. And I'm like, well, what are you going to do? Get someone else to read my book for me? <laughs> and what do they do? They got someone else to read my book. Oh, man. And it was horrific. Oh, this yeah. This guy was like a traditionally trained actor. Yeah. It was like, virtual freedom. <laughs> how to work with... And I was like, this is not me. This is not... how The, the way he was reading it was not the way it was written. Right. And it was a horrific flop. And so, I mean, we've sold a whole bunch of them, sure. but I'm sure people listen to them they and the think content. to themselves, yeah. what is going on here? Like, right. Was, was, is this like a joke? Have I been punked? You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. So this time around... I wanted that control. Yep. I wanted to be able to make the decisions I wanted to make for me right. and title uh, my work. Yep. You know? And again, it's a very, very, very integral part of my own personal brand ecosystem. So having 100% control was absolutely needed without Love a doubt. It. Love it. Um, and I mean, you know, you look at the royalty statements and you know you made the right decisions. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. Why give somebody else 85%? Of the uh, share when you've done a hundred percent of the work, are you going to yeah. do an? You going to do an audio book for uh, Rise of? I've already Jupiter? recorded it. I was in San Diego a few weeks ago. I dropped it down. We did two five-hour sessions. Wow! Crushed it on both days. You know the funny thing is this, and for any of the authors tuning in and listening yeah. to this, always make sure you record your audio book. I'm sure that they know this already. Sure. Always make sure you do it yourself, but don't forget to listen. Mm. to the words that are coming out of your mouth when you're recording it. Because at one point in the <laughs> second day, yeah. I was about an hour and a half in, and I, I, we came to an end of the chapter, and I said to the engineer, his name was Colin, I said, hey, Colin, I need to take a break for a minute. I want to get a cup of tea. No problem, Chris. And I take the headset off. I put it down on the table in front of me in the booth, and I just think to myself, this is a great book. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've written a really good book. Yeah. You know? And it kind of reaffirmed because understand I haven't I hadn't, you know, we edited sure. it seven seven months ago. Sure. You, you know, forget we had to go through it. Yeah. design and then, you know, yeah. all that kind of stuff. And it was like this is a I wrote a really, really good book. And it makes you feel good to realize that when you're reading your own yeah. book. You know, and for the hater out there who's hearing this and saying, Well, gee, that sounds really arrogant. What's the alternative? <laughs> I mean, what's the alternative? You know, I wrote my book and it stinks. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I mean, we 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 get this. We it's get not this. Worth the paper it's printed. Right. Right. Exactly. And I mean, this, but what I'm put it this way: I didn't plan on the interview going like this today. But where okay. I'm take, but and I mean that as a compliment. I'm I'm taking notes today. This is like the fourth time. I'm hearing the melody line of you know whether it's your you on your book cover, right? Whether mm -hmm. it's you and the domain name with that guy and being mm -hmm. really Chris, whether it's you saying my book, I read it, and it's actually a good book. Um, yeah. You know, what you're saying is like authenticity. You have to be you. And if you think your book's good and you say it, like, you got to say that. I mean, what are you going to say otherwise? And before people believe in you, you got to believe in you. So, right. so Chris, that's the lesson I'm taking away today is, is may, and maybe this is, you know, the main point of you, Panor, but it is that you are the business and you need to be comfortable with you, who you are and you need to stop playing to the haters and the crowds and the critics. Would you agree? I couldn't agree more with you. And I was... I was reminded of that very fact that uh, in, in, in London last November at the Upreneur Summit, we just wrapped up. 
People were leaving the convention center. And this gentleman on the name of Mark okay. from Belgium, okay. traveled in from Belgium. We actually had people from 37 countries. Come wow. Along. It's, it's incredible. Um, but Mark had traveled in from Belgium. And he's a father of two, happily married guy. Hmm. And, and he's been in the financial world for a while. Okay. And he's been hustling on the side, trying to build things up on the side of consulting business, doing well, but not quite there yet sure. to the point sure. where he can leave, right? I mean, he's got responsibilities. He's a dad. He's a husband. Right. He comes up to me at the end of this event with tears in his eyes. I mean, he's ready one blink and it's... You know, it's 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 River Nile time, right? Right. And he comes up to me with tears in his eyes and he says to mm. me, word for word, Chris, I want you to know that the world gave up on me. Mm. But you made me realize that the world needs me more than ever right now. Wow. And I was just like... <laughs> Like I started crying. And wow! It was like, I think it's the emotions of like the end of the event. Sure. And I hugged this guy, and it's we're recording this now, beginning of April. Yeah. Beginning of March. Mm. Mark quit his job of twenty Whoa. years. Wow. And set up his own consultancy in Belgium. And he probably and so never would have done it. I mean, I'm I'm gonna just go out there on the limb and say, he wouldn't have had the courage and the belief of someone backing him like you if you hadn't done that event. I understand also that I hadn't done it in a super personal way. Mm. All I had done was crafted my message and, and, and put it in such a concise manner that he understood it in a wow. room full of 375 people and he got it. Um, and, and, you know, there's no doubt in my mind that it's, it's the right decision for him because he's been on the fence for mm. years about it, apparently, but now he's jumped and he's ready to go. He's just actually, we just launched tickets for this year's event today. Yeah. And one of the first people to buy the ticket I saw come through was his. So he's coming back to London to I love try it. and learn what to do in the next segment of his career. We'll find out. I love it. Well, listen, Chris, you, you blessed us today with some amazing content. I'm going to encourage everybody who sees this or hears it, you, the you, Rise of the Youpreneur. Um, I love long subtitles, by the way, because no one ever remains, r remembers the subtitle, but it is a I buying mean, decision. If I hold it up, it, it's a good size subtitle, but it's, it doesn't oh, it's, take yeah. over the no, entire It's not too bad. No, cover, no, it's right? not too bad. I mean, my forehead takes over the cover, <laughs> right. not the subtitle. <laughs> right. No, it's a great subtitle. It helps with the buying decision because people understand the benefit. Right. So, so Chris, where can people find out more about you, the Youpreneur Summit, uh, all these good things you've talked about? Well, I mean, you know, my home online is chrisducker.com. I wouldn't be much of a personal brand entrepreneur if I didn't have my own domain name. So chrisducker.com, uh, if they're interested in the book, they can just obviously search for Rise of Youpreneur on Amazon. Sure. And if they're interested in the live event, it's youpreneursummit.com. Dot com. Fantastic. Well, listen, you've inspired me. You've given me more permission to be me. That's something that we need reminders of all the time. And uh, thank you so much, Chris. Thank you for having me, man. You're an inspiration. I appreciate it. All right.